Uh, but we're continuing our study through this book of uh, Second Corinthians in chapter three. And I think it's kind of funny, you know, the Lord, the Lord is really funny. At least I think so. Uh, today, the title of our message is uh, "Making Changes." Uh, we're not going to have PowerPoint because through all the stuff, I forgot the thumb drive in the computer. So, ah, uh, shucks. You know what? Go to the website. Yes, you get them from the website. Uh, but. What we're going to talk about is making changes. You know, uh, one of the things we can tend to do is we make changes, you know, depending on our circumstances, uh, our surroundings, uh, our standards, um, you know, because of people, right? And, and a lot of times we, we find a dead end to that change. We, we, we find ourselves even more lost sometimes, right? And the problem is really simple. Well, I should say the answer is really simple. The answer is, are we uh, making the changes because of God's Spirit? You know? Uh, you know, one of the things that I think is hilarious is that, you know, when we're opening up service, uh, it's happening all over, and, um, you know, this change is really freaking out a lot of people, and we ought to be concerned, don't take it lightly, but, you know, are we listening to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? You know, we, we need to trust God in everything that we do, and, you know, um, i, I got to be really honest with you, you know, just last week we had a meeting, and uh, uh, I fell apart in the meeting, uh, because of Jesus in my life and uh, a drastic changes and um, I'm just trying to focus and make sure that I hear God and the changes because I can tend to make the changes that I think is the most appropriate for me you know, and I think we can all agree on that so in chapter 1 let's kind of summarize what you know up to chapter 3 in, so in chapter 1 uh, we talked about finding God's direction in ministry you know, where is God leading us? What is God calling us to do? In chapter 2, we looked at how the enemy can trip up that, that, that plan. Yeah? Jesus has called for His glory instead of the glory of God. And also in that same chapter, we learned how to be more of a model, or model, uh, model ourselves into the likeness of the Lord. Today, like we say, the domestic is saying, excuse me, right here, Tom. Uh, we're going to look at change. So, how do we know? I think as believers, something we need to ask ourselves, how do we know what we are doing for the Lord and in the Lord is having an effect? See, each of our lives should have something huge going on. And that something huge isn't, you know, the, the lights and all the glamour. Huge. And so that we be talking about is moving in the spirit of the Lord, witnessing for the glory of God. Now, how do we measure that? I think that it's really simple. If the things done in people's life bear witness to the Spirit's action, then we got to come up. God is involved, right? But if the things are done in the flesh, you will have self-promotion. It will be about self. You would have the me, me, I, I, right? And, and it would have this human trait written all, all over it. You cannot miss it. Comes down. God not involved in that. You know, the crazy thing is that a lot of times Christians fall to this lie of the enemy about changes in our life. You see, we're going to talk about changes in the sense of how do we change to become all that God has called us to be? Right? So a lot of times we get caught up in, uh, we, we, we think because we do ministry that we be lining up. But that's not the big deal. Right? The big deal is our action to interact with God. That's the big deal. So, with that, let's read our study because it's kind of. You know, when you read this, you know, we can't get this down in the big portion, but it's really funny uh, for me anyway. When I'm reading this, I'm like, wow, this is really crazy. It says this in first uh, Corinthians, uh, second Corinthians chapter three, verse one. Are we beginning to praise ourselves again? 
Are we like others who need to bring your, uh, you letters of recommendation or who ask you to write each, such letters on their behalf? Truly not. So, you know, to take this and put it into perspective, we got to remember uh, in the days of fall, it was uh, a common place for people to write letters to other people concerning somebody else's ministry. Uh, but unfortunately, what we see here uh, as we study through the book of Corinthians, we find that false teachers are making up their own letters, right? Witnessing for their own self and send them out to the home churches, and they were invading, if you were, the home churches and giving this teaching that wasn't beautiful. Now, we'll talk about why Paul says he didn't read any letter or why they don't read any letter, but I wanted to point out a, a make up point here that I think is important for us to know. Uh, so on one hand, you know, you think about this, uh, uh, we've been in ministry for a while and, you know, we've been able to be blessed by many people and um, different people from all over. Uh, and so having led the recommendations can help, right? You know, you know, I know somebody out there, uh, we had somebody, uh, I can't even remember where they're from, a long time ago, in Caraba, I think, and they came down and they decided to um, minister. Uh, but we knew the people who knew them. They were part of the four square uh, family. And when they came down, they shared how God was moving in their country. And uh, it was really crazy, right? And so because we got recommendation letters from our fellow um, pastors and now our, our, our home church, we started to say, okay, maybe we ought to have you guys come. So in that case, yeah, it's good. Right? To have the recommendations. This means you're going someplace new and you don't know nobody. Eh? You know, you're already getting people coming out of here. But what can happen is that a lot of times uh, the recommendation becomes more important than the service <coughs> of, of work to the Lord. We see this happen a lot, right? We start to believe that our uh, own press clippings. Uh, about us is, is, is the big deal. Uh, we, we look for status uh, instead of looking for opportunity to serve God. You know, I've seen this in ministry a lot of the times, uh, you know, with um, different people, not, I should say everybody, but you know, uh, it's all about who they are, what they can do, and it's not about going to ministry. And the ministry I'm talking about is the witnessing of the power and authority of Jesus Christ. They get stuck with this power and this status uh, type of thing instead of the channel, instead of channeling God's spirit into the lives of those who listen. And it's important that we never lose focus on this. Every single one of us, our one sole purpose is to channel the Holy Spirit's power into somebody else's life, to somebody who is listening, somebody who wants to hear. You know what, uh, I, I don't think it's wrong for us to share our own, when we talk about this experience and stuff like that, but in order to change hearts, your experience is just your experience. And then, your, your experience is not going to change my heart, you may change my way of thinking, right? But the only one who can change hearts is God. And this is why we need to understand that the Spirit of the Lord is so important to the believer because the changes that it makes in the man's heart is concrete changes. Those changes that will lead you to some place. We'll talk, that, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, uh, let's see. 2 Corinthians verses three, um, chapter 3, verses 2 to 3. The only letter of recommendation we need is you, yourself. Your lives are a letter written in, in our hearts. Right? Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the result of our ministry among you. This letter is written not with ink, uh, pen and ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on heart of human hearts. So, when we read this, it's really cool because Paul answers that question, yeah, at the beginning, why he didn't uh, need letters of recommendation, you know, we fall on top of right? He says, your lives 
is the recommendation letter that I need. People will look at you and they will say, the work is happening, you surely show that you are a tool in which God is using for his kingdom. You know, I, I think about this, and I'm sure all of you, I want you to really think about this, because I'm sure all of you guys can touch somebody's life. Right? A Christian cannot help but touch people's lives. People recognize the glory of God on you. You know, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We'll call it the kind of glory of God, His presence. And people want it, right? And when people see that, do you know that people get jealous? Right? In a good way, you know, man, I want what you want, you yeah. have. You know, I became a Christian uh, because my grandfather there, my, my aunt there, they all had this, this glory of God. They was happy all the time, and they made me sick because, you know, what was the deal? You know what I mean? How is that possible? And I found out it was the glory of God in their life. And now, let me share with you. Uh, the, the situation I live in through, my grandfather went through, and I, I don't know, I think he's probably crazy because he kept smiling all the way, you know. Uh, my auntie went through a situation very similar, and they still praise God and trust in God, and, and it's not to make sense, you know. But it's still hard to, to trust God sometimes when you're living a good experience. But it is so awesome as a Jews, it says, you can look to others and you can see their faith and they can strengthen us. That is why each of you are important. That's why the church fellowship is important. Because, like I shared uh, last week, uh, you know, with the group that was here, without their presence, without the fellowship, I would be lost. And I'm a pastor guy, you think I can have it all together. But, you know what? When life is smooth, it's easy to walk. We, we had the saying, I think, in our, in our mini church, we actually had it in, in the message, you know, easy to believe when your stomach is full. Not easy to believe when your stomach is empty. Right? Easy to believe in all that God can do when your life no more drama. <laughs> when you get drama, ah. Yeah. I'm a pastor guy, believe me, you know, I ask for prayers every day. You know, I don't turn no prayers, any kind of prayers, you know. Uh, just pray. And so here we see that Paul is saying to them, your life that was changed because of their heart for Jesus, and that your heart falling in love with Jesus is the testimony. You see, I love this. I think as a pastor, you know, I, I am so blessed because I get to see our members of this fellowship, uh, you know, and encourage them to grow in their faith, uh, lead them to Jesus. I, we, you know, we just had a couple baptisms, you know, uh, you know, and we've got many other ones, you know, uh, and and it's all the work of God, right? And and I can never ever take credit for that because it's not my credit. I didn't change their heart. All I did was allow God to change my heart, be obedient to God, share His Spirit with everybody else in whatever way I can, and then let God change the heart. See, I, I, I'm learning this, and I know this, but you know, like I say, when you live in it, you learn it, uh, you know, it kind of grabs you a little bit better, uh, harder, however. Uh, you know, uh, life experience is good. You can be a good teacher, right? But even life, we change according to circumstances and not to what God is saying. How many of us, you know, I love to ask you to show you this hand, make decisions because of circumstances and not because God said so. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah? We change because we think that's the right thing to do or that's the best thing to do, yet we never seek the counsel of God. And then everything get all messed up. Now, <coughs> I think that all of you should know this. Okay? You, you guys are sitting in the church, you guys are listening, however. But you get touched by the Lord. And that changes that you made for the kingdom. It's changes that's going to lead to eternity. 
I think that is the message today. The changes that we make, is it kingdom value type of changes? Or is it the world value changes that we do? Right? Because we all want to do change to make a better life, to make a better business and all this stuff. But how many of us are investing in thinking about changing our lives so that we can seal the deal in the sense of, of eternity being ours? Not eternity in the lake of fire, but eternity in heaven. What kind of changes do we need to make? You know, I want to encourage everybody that when you come to the Lord, uh, it's not easy changing, right? Uh, it took me years. I've been a Christian still struck me. 20 something years. I still need changes. I'm still working on it, right? But those changes happen more and more as I started trusting in God's authority in my life. The more I give up to Him, the more I change into His life. Second Corinthians, uh, three, verse eight. We are confident of all these because of our great trust in God through Christ. It is not that we think we, we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. He has enabled us to be ministers of His new covenant. This is the covenant not of written laws, of the, um, but of the Spirit. The old written law ends in death, but under the new covenant, the Spirit is life. Now, you know, this is really, really cool. So Paul, we, we have to grab some of these words, and I'm not going to like, get you all crazy about the Greek words, because, you know, I get all crazy, you know. Uh, if it was Hawaiian, it's easier for mention. These Greek words, that's why it's called Greek, it's weird. Um, you know, <laughs> no offense to the Greek guys, sorry. Uh, but, uh, you know, when we look at the word qualified, you take the Greek word and it actually means to make fit, to make something fit, right? So when Paul writes this and he says to, uh, to qualify uh, us, he's saying that God made us fit for the purpose of His glory, for His work. And then He hasn't only given us or made us fit, He's also given us the ability the power to manifest in our lives, right? To, to produce God's Spirit and, and hand it out. Isn't it crazy? I don't care how how bad you are, okay? And, and, and I say this, in, you know, not that you will be bad, but how many of you guys are sick today? Anybody sick today? Yeah? Yeah. Some of you just been sick because you know, like, raise your hand, you know? You know? But here's the thing. Because of what we have in the new covenant through Jesus Christ, our rock is covered when we repent. Once we repent, we are qualified again to hand out Holy Spirit power. Oh, isn't that crazy? Everybody thinks that's a pastor's job. No, 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 that's not just the pastor's job. That's everybody's job. If you are a believer of Jesus Christ, you have been called to minister, right? It says this, okay, in Acts 8, 1, um, 1, 8. But you will receive power, okay, mind to change that word, ability, yeah, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Holy Spirit came upon you when you received Jesus Christ into your life. You know, people get all thoughts about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But there's two different baptisms, okay. This one is the baptism of Christ coming upon you. The Holy Spirit's presence comes upon you, living in you. Oh boy, I almost shall have ever been doing that. Uh, calm it down. Okay, right, so it says, but you receive the power, the ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness, okay? Telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You should be screaming hallelujah. God just told you, not me, because I know buddy, right? But God just told you, I have qualified you to hold my authority and then release my authority. I give you that right. It's so cool. So we should be 
so blown away that the changes that God is able to do in us through His Spirit is crazy changes. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, if it wasn't for the presence of God in my life, with the way my life is, I'd probably run the hard way. So I'm just be honest. Right? I get everybody telling me what they think, you know, I told you guys before, they can just mind their own business, you know what I mean, in the name of Jesus. Uh, but what I do want, again, is I want people who love Jesus surrounding me, reminding me not to give up, to continue to trust. And when I'm too weak to lift my hands, lift my hands to pray this, I get my friends, my brothers, my sisters, who will help me hold my hands up to the victory. But that strength can only come to the, the, the power of Jesus, right? To the Spirit of God. Now, I love it because I, you know, I'm going to change the words around. We can take all this and we'll twist this all around, you know, shake them up, and I will give them to you in the way my brain translates them, okay? And this is this. Paul is saying this to me. God took the power, the ability of the Holy Spirit, and made me fit to be used and to use that power to invest into other people's lives that they would be empowered with the power of God to change. It's simple. Right? All of that, and all I have to do is shake the words around a little bit, right? So too many times we, we, we use other things to qualify us, right? Or, uh, you know, I, I get education, right? I get experience. Um, I have these natural abilities, you know, I'm just that good, you know, kind of stuff. I think it's so funny, you see this in church all the time. Uh, you know, we, we think about the tools. I mean, I, I, I wish I could tell you I'm a genius when it comes to building messages, right? Uh, there's these wonderful programs on, 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 on the internet that just help you to put all this together. And I just got to translate English into Pigeon, right? And their experience into my experience. And I start grabbing this and I'm praying and the Holy Spirit starts to dump all this stuff in my brain. And then I'm like getting crazy and then we get something. So crazy, right? Because a lot of people don't understand half the stuff you can get off the internet means nothing and is powerless unless God has intervened and changed it. And when I say change it, it changes it from good. Now, I recommend to everybody, you know, I thought when I first became a pastor, I was supposed to have this huge, you know, inspiration from God every day. You know, every time I do a message, and then that wasn't working, I was losing my mind, and then I realized that the Lord created this internet thing and I found some massive, awesome programs that I can work with. You know, that I, I, I didn't come up with the Greek words. These programs tell me the Greek words. You know what I mean? I don't choose to use them because they're Greek. You know? Um, and I'll just give you the definition. But, man, you know what? If you guys want to do messages and, and, you know, preach, check out these tools. But if at any moment, I think that these tools qualify me to preach, or my experience qualifies me to preach the Word of God, then I'm badly mistaken. Those things are all tools that God has placed before me and has given me, but I still need Holy Ghost power in order to develop the way God wants me to develop and then deliver it with His power. Does that make strength? Not make strength. Make sense? Make strength. That's teaching. <laughs> now again, let's move on. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't want to forget this. That's why it's important that we pray all the time. You know, I'm going to be real honest with you guys. I'm the pastor guy. I pray a lot because part of it is my job. Right? And sometimes I get so mad with my situation or irritated or whatever it is, lazy, call it whatever you want to do, to we get planning. How many of us know I pray? Anybody ever felt like that? Yeah? And so I'll pray for some of you liars because you know, <laughs> actually you want to raise their hands. Um, 
Um, let's read 2 Corinthians uh, 3, 7 to 11. The old way with the law etched in stone led to death. Though it began with such glory, the people of Israel could not bear to look at Moses' face, for his face shone with the glory of God. Even though his brightness was already fading away, shouldn't we expect far greater glory under the new way? Now the Holy Spirit is giving life. If the old way, which brings condemnation, was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way which makes us right to God? In fact, the first glory was not glorious at all compared to the overwhelming glory of the new way. So if the old way which has been replaced has glory, was glorious, how much more glorious is the new which remains forever? Now that's a lot of bunch of words, right? You know? It sounds almost like, you know, one of those Peter Piper, you know, all that stuff, right? But in order to make sense, a lot of the times, you know, um, in order to make sense of New Testament, you've got to go back to Old Testament. So this is what they're talking about. Exodus 34, 29 to 35. Then Moses came down from Mount Sinai, carrying the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant. The covenant. He wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to God. So when Aaron and the people of Israel saw the radiance of uh, Moses' face, they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to them and asked Aaron and all the leaders of the community to come over. And he talked to them. Then all the people of Israel approached him, and Moses gave them all the instructions the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with them, he covered his face with a veil. But, whatever, but whenever he went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil until he came out again. Then he would give the people of Israel, uh, then he would give the people whatever instruction the Lord had given him, and the people of Israel would seek the radiant glow of his face, so he would put the veil over his face until he turned to speak with the Lord. Not until he turned to speak with the Lord. Now, I, I, I tried to search this and I tried to figure out, you know, because I like to try to make sense of some stuff. I don't even know why Moses' face was glowing. You know what I mean? All I can think about is like what I shared before. When people look at you and they see something different, it's the kind of glory of God. Okay? Uh, so we don't know why he, his face was literally, literally glowing, but it was. Okay? But Paul uses using it as a way to uh, make a difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old brought a certain glory, okay? That's what Paul was writing. The Old brought a certain type of glory. God's presence, right? The tent of meetings, the miracles, the sacrifice, even the law. But in it all, uh, but all of it pointed to a certain thing. But all of that pointed to even a greater glory that was coming, right? And that glory was the was going to be found in the new covenant that is found in Jesus Christ. Now, when we read Testament or the Old Testament and we start searching in the New Testament, we find that Jesus fulfilled, right, the Old Testament about the Messiah that was coming. And so. We, we look at the uh, we look at the word and we start to study the word and we find out that Jesus' ministry surpasses the old covenant. It did what the old covenant couldn't do, right? Which was say man. The old covenant didn't say, you know, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit because a lot of the uh, Jewish people still get stuck on the old covenant, but the old covenant condemns. It doesn't say. Now, Paul tells us that the church, uh, Paul tells the church, the old covenant's glory was fading, meaning it wasn't supposed to last. But they don't understand that, right? They didn't get it. They didn't realize that when Moses was talking about him, uh, this, teaching them that he's waiting and he's presenting uh, a more glorious glory on um, anointing coming, they, they couldn't get it. And so, they are still stuck. Paul is dealing with people who still stuck with the Old Testament. You know, they'll say, well, Abraham, Isaac, you know, keep going that. And then Paul, you know, Jesus will later say to them, 
uh, some stuff that I think is important to remind them that Moses was writing about the end. Now, like I said, the law couldn't have lapsed because the law was given to put uh, us in a, in a few guidelines, but the law condemned us. There was no redemption in the law. Right? I mean, if you guys read the law, you know that right now we, we only have one destination, right? If we was going to live by the law. You guys know where that is? Yeah? Um, because we went break the law. We, we cannot keep the law. And that's why we're talking about change. In order to fall in love with the Lord Jesus, right? Uh, it's, we, we have to submit to Him. As we submit to Him in love, then the heart changes. And now the rules that God's us to live by is no longer rules, but an affection of love. Does that make sense? Okay. 2 Corinthians 3, 4, 16. Since the new way gives us such confidence, we can be very bold. We are told we are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened, and to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so that they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can um, and this veil can be removed only by the believing in Christ. Yes, even today, when they, are, when they read Moses' writing, their hearts are covered with that veil. They do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So, Jesus says this to you guys, you know, and he says that Paul's writing and he says that Jesus Yes, and even Jesus had his problem. In John 5, 56, he said, if you really believe Moses, right, because it was about Moses and the law, you would believe me because he wrote about me. It's so crazy when you read the writings, you see him writing all about the Messiah. And like I said earlier, we make the connection because Jesus fulfills the prophecy. Well, there's people who still got stuck on that. In fact, like I said earlier, we still have Jewish people today who still live by the law. They think they're saved by the law. But it's very sad because they, they, their hearts, right, they cannot see the glory of God behind the veil. I don't know if you guys realize this, but because you receive Jesus Christ, Right? Because of what Jesus has done for us, we can walk straight into the throne room of heaven. Now, Jesus died on the cross. At the moment of his death, we read in um, Matthew 27, 51, at the moment the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, the earth shook, rocks split open, the wants to eat. It says even the tombs flew open or the, 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 the rocks open and people were walking out alive. It was talking about the power of Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, the, the, the veil, not everybody could go into the, the most holy of holies, but because of the sacrifice of Jesus, now each of us can do that. How often do we take the opportunity to walk into the throne room? A lot of times we sabotage ourselves and we say, oh, because I'm this and I'm that. You know what? I, I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel junk when you sing. You should feel junk. But more than that, you should rejoice in the fact that Jesus died to sanctify us and make us holy, that now we can stand in the presence of God, speak to Him one-on-one, -on -one, and have Him minister to our hearts. Right? It's so important. And, you know, it's so cool because, you know, sometimes you get into the presence of God. How many of you guys need the presence of God? Who are you confused? Anybody? I do. I'm like, Lord, did you really want me to do that? And so I ask for confirmation. And I'm sometimes I act like an idiot. I'll ask for more than one. You know? God is so good. He obliges. You know? And 
he uses another believer a lot of times to be his mouthpiece, to be his tangible hands. And sometimes he uses his eyes to look upon him, to remind him. Yes. You see, because of Jesus, we now have a direct access to the Spirit of God. Because of Jesus, we have now been made fit to hold His presence. We are like Moses. You guys all walk in Moses You know what I mean? We hold the presence of the Lord. But I think, I think a lot of the times our problem is we have forgotten the privilege and the honor that it is to be called such a servant of Christ that we have now made it a common place at this time. Second Corinthians uh, 3, 17 to 18, this is about the way we will end. For the Lord is a spirit, and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had the will removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we change into His glorious image. Now, I think this is something so cool. You know, this is, as we turn our eyes onto the Lord and rely upon Him and, and, and trust Him, we start to reflect the glory of God. You know, it's so funny that even in my dilemma in my life, uh, as I start to trust God, I'm not basket case, you know what I mean? Not a good one moment, but some one moment, I just kind of go like this. Uh, trusting God in all of it, but you know the crazy thing is that I, I just try to stay real close to God as I can. And the crazy thing is this, you know I minister uh, so much at work of the glory of God and how the Lord works. And that just because we love the Lord, it doesn't mean that our life is perfect or will be perfect. It's far from that, you know. It means we'll be challenged. We're going, to be, we're going to be tested, right? Our faith needs to be strengthened and we cannot be strengthened if everything is good. And I'm not saying that you should have that. Just think about it this way. I, I, I'm waiting. This is my, my mindset right now. Right now I'm going to my dry season. I cannot wait for the wind to come. <laughs> yeah. And then harvest a good feel of oh, 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 uh, harvest from that that magic that God has done. So uh, let's see. We see that the law cannot make changes in our life. Rules and regulation cannot make us a better person, right? In fact, sometimes rules and regulation make us more ugly. Uh, but if we trust God, then He fits us and He changes our heart for His glory and for the task that's at hand. What makes you different and me different is the Spirit of God working in our lives as we turn to Him, rely on Him, and take Him in. we got to take Him in. Right? Not just do our eyes look, give it up to you. we got to take Him in. we got to breathe Him in. Okay? So God, 1423, Jesus replied, All who would have loved me will do what I say. My Father will love them. And we will come and make our home. That's kind of promise, right? We love Him. The Father, Jehovah God, who love us. And He will come and live in us. The Spirit of the Lord. John 663, The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human efforts accomplishes nothing. Uh, and the very words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. It means, you know what, we can do everything we like in our own power, but that's not going to take us to the kingdom of God. Yeah? We need to be driven by the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to conclude this whole thing. Uh, Second Corinthians is our last scripture. Second Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person, the old life is gone, and a new life has begun. Okay, so let's kind of sum this up. Uh, if you want to make, uh, if you want to make uh, changes in your life, this is the don'ts, okay? Don't look to yourself, because you won't disappoint you. Okay? Don't look to others, they won't disappoint you. Alright? 
Don't look to fulfill some kind of rule or regulation or law because you're condemned. Instead, look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Rely on the Spirit to bring us light. Pray for His power and ability and authority to make us fit for what He has called us to do. Right? And lastly, spend more time with the Lord. Right? More time. Give Him more of you. Get, let Him have all of you. And the more you start to turn over to Him, guess what? The more you look like Him. So simple, huh? But the problem is that I gotta give up my own, my own desires. I, I'm learning this that I, you know, so crazy. The more I surrender my desires, the more I understand that those desires was just want and not what God wanted for me in order that I would be fulfilling His purpose for my life. See, I, I read the Bible, I'm not on the but I've been reading it, right and I understand this. The gospel he has put into store for me, but I'm not listening and I'm not changing to his likeness. And how can I see that promise? I'm fighting the promise. I think it's time for us to change, right? But through the power of the Holy Spirit, not through some kind of program, not through some kind of church, you know, this church, that church. No, no, no. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through a relationship with the Lord. Amen? Let's pray. We call the worship team up. Uh, Lord God, Father, we come before you. We thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for the message. You know, we're talking about change and all that's going on in our world. Uh, you know, it's just kind of pulling us in all kinds of directions. But help us to listen to you, Lord God. Help us to allow your Spirit to minister to us that as we change, we change into the likeness of you. We start to trust you. And those changes that we make are changes that are concrete, that leads to a place called heaven, that leads to a relationship with you. One that will never fade as long as we continue to love you. And so we thank you for the word today, Lord God. And we just pray for strength. And so as we end, we ask that you just continue to fill us up, you can minister to us in Jesus' name. Amen.